let's recap really briefly. We saw that the range is a measure of spread, but it's not good. So then we wanted to find the deviation. And it was a little bit complicated, but we learned how to do it by hand. Lovely, marvelous. We learned that there's population values versus sample values, and that the units are a little messed up for the variance. Fine, wonderful. And then there's a relationship between the variance and standard deviation. Great. But we don't want to lose sight of what these numbers tell us about our data set. What do the variance and the standard deviation mean? How do we interpret them in tandem with the data set? That's important. All right, so let's look at these data sets. So we have an algebra class. The algebra class has a standard deviation of 10.176 and a variance of 103.56. And I'm sorry, I should have put units on that just so you can see it, but it's points squared. This one is S, this is S squared. We would use the S values because these are samples, right? So this was a sample of algebra students and a sample of uh, statistics students. So I'll just make a note over here. Note. We're using S and S squared because our data set, well sets, are samples. All right. Now the statistics class, we learned the standard deviation and the variance. Um, we found them right here. The standard deviation was 13.968, and the variance was 195.1. Okay, so let's write those in. So this was 13, I'm running out of space, so <laughs> I think I'm just going to say about 14. I, I, I can say 13.96, but 13.968 points. Oh, I already have points in there. I didn't notice that. They're typed already. And the variance was 195.11 points squared. Sure. Lovely. All right. Now, what is this telling us? Well, we can see it visually, but we can see it from these numbers. The statistics class is more spread out. The statistics class, which we knew from the graph anyway, I mean, you can look at the dots, is more spread out, right? It has more dispersion. It's the fancy way to say it. Um, dis oh, I, I guess I'll say more disperse, more varied, right? More disperse than the algebra class. Now, how do we know? How do we know it's more spread out? It's more dispersed. How can we tell? And the answer is, that's what standard deviation and variance are measuring for us. Look, let's compare standard deviations. So uh, let's just write this up here. And let's talk about standard deviations. If we look at the standard deviations, the standard deviation for the algebra class was 10.176, 10.176 points. And the standard deviation for the uh, statistics course, I'll do it in green, um, was 13.968 points. This is the bigger number, right? The alligator eats the bigger thing, chomp, 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 right? So this is larger. It has a larger standard deviation, right? Statistics course. has a larger standard deviation, S, right, standard deviation. Let's look at the variance. So you can see what variance is useful for. This is one of the ways we use variance. The algebra class had a variance of 103.56 points squared. The statistics class had a variance of 195.11 points squared. So this is statistics over here, I should say. Well, look at it, right? It's a bigger number, right? The monster eats the bigger thing, right? Pac-Man eats the bigger thing. So this is the bigger number. So that means the statistics course had a larger variance as well.
If your variance is larger, then you're more spread out. If your standard deviation is larger, then you're more spread out, right? The larger these values are, the more spread out your data set is. That's what they measure. They measure how spread out the data sets are. And that's what I wrote right here. Number one, the larger the standard deviation and or the variance, right, then the more spread out a data set is. That's what I'm showing right here. All right, now variance is a little strange. Um, we don't do a ton with variance because there's not really a good practical interpretation of it. It's a measurement that's really used in mathematical formulas and it's very powerful. Me personally, when I was in my later statistics work and to get my statistics master's degree, I was using variance constantly <laughs> because it's very useful, um, more useful actually for upper level stuff than standard deviation, but that has to do with the math involved. So suffice to say, we just need you to know how to find it and the fact that if it's bigger, that means that that data set has a larger spread. The larger the variance, the larger the spread. Also, you need to know the relationship between variance and standard deviation that was covered right here, right? The fact that they're related to each other. All right, now, what's more important for us is the standard deviation. The standard deviation can be thought of roughly as the give or take from the mean in a symmetric data set. So in other words, most data fall within the standard deviation or two, we'll get to that later, um, but most data fall within one or a couple standard deviations of the mean. All right, so this is the big interpretation piece right here. Now that leads us to a script. A script is kind of a formulaic way of writing things uh, that we will use frequently in this class. All right, and our script for interpreting the mean and standard deviation is right here. So we expect, and then you have to write the context. So you write the context out for what we're talking about. And then we expect it to be whatever the mean is, because the mean is your center, give it units, give or take, because that's the plus or minus, right? The standard deviation. All right. And I just realized there's a typo in there. There shouldn't be a bracket in the front of that standard deviation, but that's all right. And then we'll talk about unusual in a second, but I want you to kind of do the interpretation piece first. So let's, let's use that interpretation right here to do this example. Okay, so remember that the mean, which we already found, was 74. So let's interpret the mean and standard deviation in the context of this situation. So we expect, and then what was this? This was a random statistics student, right? So we expect a random statistics student. I think this was exam scores. I mean, it's all made up anyway. <laughs> to score, right? So there's the context right there. A random statistics student to score. That's the context. And then to score what? Well, we expect them to score 74 points, right, oh, on this exam, I guess I should say, well, I can just leave it, 74 points, give or take, and then what was it? It was, the standard deviation was 14, I mean, it's 13.968, so we could say uh, 14 points. Okay, so let me do this right here. So the mean is right here. That's the mean, right? And it has units. That's what the points is. The standard deviation is right here. Okay, let me under get rid of the blue here. Let me underline that in green so you can see. That's the standard deviation, right? And then what's this part up above that I'm underlining? That's the context, right? So I'm giving the context right here. Context is actually the part where you end up spending most of your time. Like, what is this talking about? What, what are we talking about? And so in this case, it was a random student scoring on this test, right? You could add on this exam, right? Something like that on this exam, if you wanted to. All right, now let's talk about unusual. All right, so unusual, this is a very important definition. Um, we will run into unusual throughout the whole course. 
unusual means two specific things that are related to each other. We have two interpretations for unusual, and both will be coming in handy um, right away, actually, in chapter three. All right, so, oh, that didn't really show up at all. Let me change that to like a blue highlight here, just to kind of make sure this really pops. There we go. I like my purple highlighter, but it's very faint. There we go. All right, so unusual. <sighs> unusual is anything that's beyond two standard deviations away from the mean. That'll be unusual. Okay, so that means that unusual will be, let's find out. So it's two standard deviations away. So let's take the mean plus two standard deviations. And let's find what that is. So the mean is 74, and I'm going to add two standard deviations, which they were roughly 14. It was 13.968, so I'm just kind of rounding. I guess I could have added that up here. This is a standard deviation. I just kind of rounded it for convenience. Rounded from 13.968, just for the sake of it, just because it was convenient <laughs> to me. <laughs> right? Not for any particular mathematical reason. All right, then I'm going to take the mean and I'm going to take away two standard deviations. Um, I'm realizing I want to write this up a little bit higher. All right, so when I find these two values, right, anything beyond these would be unusual. All right, so I'm going to go grab Desmos. Here it is. All right, so Desmos, help me out, buddy. I'm going to get rid of all these things so you can see it. So 74 plus 2 parentheses 14, which just so the record, what I'm doing is I'm adding 14 twice. That's what multiplication is, right? It's fancy adding, right? So adding two 14s is the same thing as just adding 14, adding 14, right? Similarly, I want to take 74 and take away 14 and take away 14, or in other words, 74 take away two 14s, and you get 46. So 46 on the low side, 102 on the high side. One oh two points and forty six points. So now the question is are there any unusual values? Well unusual values would be anything higher than this would be unusual. Higher than one oh two or lower than 46? And the answer is no. We didn't have either of those things, right? So did the statistics course have any unusual values? No. The stats course had no unusual values. Because no values were above one oh two nor below forty six. And you always want to kind of keep this in your mind. This is where standard deviation is really powerful. Standard deviation is telling you, hey, you know, most of the time things are going to fall within one standard deviation. But anything past two standard deviations, that's unusual. Right? So it's giving you kind of a sense of the spread of the data with numbers, right? So if you think back to your graph, we expect 74, because that's the mean, give or take 14. So most values fall in here, right? And then anything past 102 or 46 would be unusual. That's what standard deviation does for you. It gives you that measure of how much spread there will be in a data set.